Bill Gates said, I always choose a lazy person to do a difficult job because a lazy person will find an easy way to do it. What's a real life example of this? I was working as a stock boy in a supermarket and when we had to fill the milk cooler, people would bust open a 12 pack of milk cartons and put them in one by one. On my first day, I just placed the 12 pack in the cooler and cut the plastic off on one side with my box cutter and yanked it from under and the look of the store manager and the other employee who was training me was pure bewilderment. From that day, everyone did it my way. Haha, <laughs> I did this during the start of the pandemic with paper towels on an empty shelf. Thanks COVID panic buyers. Instead of opening the box of a single roll of paper towels and placing them on the shelf, I just cut the bottom of the box and slid the rolls right out. Start of lockdown. My nine-year-old son was having worksheets emailed to complete at home. One day, left him at the laptop doing his maths while I made some dinner with my three-year-old daughter, walked into the living room with his dinner to find him asking Alexa all of his math questions. I wouldn't call that lazy so much as an intelligent use of the technology at hand. Learning and utilizing technology is probably much better lesson than whatever the particular math problem he was working on. Worked as a laborer at a nursery one summer. Daily tasks included manually watering 15,000 plants each day, put together a back of the napkin plan to build an irrigation system, and spent the next few weeks building it with some money from the boss. That system is still running 15 years later and does all the work now. I did automate myself out of the job and had to find another eventually. A couple years later, got my engineering degree. I'm convinced engineers are inherently lazy people that will spend disproportionate effort to make things easier. My brother-in-law spent a whole summer trying to figure out how to fix his sagging deck at the lake, which he could in theory crawl under and jack it up. It would have been a tunneling project. It's 60 by 60 area, long 2 by 6 boards, massive. I sat there long enough with enough beers in me to come up with the idea of just cutting a square out of the sagging area about 3x3 three three feet, jacking it up, then rescrewing down the boards. He paints the thing every spring with a roller, anyhow, so it's not like the square cut shows up. He thought I was a genius. I was just lazy. I had a math teacher that actively encouraged his students to be as lazy as possible, defining lazy as actively searching for ways to do as minimal work as possible. His logic was that, the way math is now, it could always be simplified and still work the same. Someone just needs to be lazy enough to find that. I was a paid intern at a large company one summer, back home from college. My work 95% consisted of using SAP, import to Excel, clean data and generate reports, occasionally creating some tools needed. In the first two weeks after getting a hang of my responsibilities, writing all the Excel formulas needed, and basically automating 99% of my work, I was chillin'. I went from actually working from nine to five to maybe one hour tops a day. Finding, importing, cleaning, and reporting usually took hours, but with all the formulas, it took two minutes of clicking. I then helped the other cool intern get his shit set up so we could both just chill. We could take two hour lunches, paid for by the company, and nobody said anything because we were just getting so much more done than the other interns. Of course I helped for special tasks when asked, but those were simple 20 minute tasks building something in Excel. Overall, was the easiest stressless internship of my life. The clerk was asked to bring 145 white papers into the office. He doesn't want to count the papers manually, so we printed 145 blank sheets and took them in. Smart. He used a machine that counts as one of its functions, but not the primary function, to do the counting for him. It's just enough outside the box that most people wouldn't think to do it at all. We had to hold a thermometer in water and chemistry class. It probably was only 20 minute experiment, but your arms get tired after a couple minutes, and you can't let the thermometer touch the bottom of the pan, or it won't get an accurate reading. So instead of sucking it up and just holding the thermometer, my lab partner built a contraption out of lab books and paper clips to somehow hold the thermometer in the water without it touching the bottom. It was the stupidest looking thing you would ever see in a lab class, and our professor even walked over and said, 
If it looks stupid, sounds stupid, but works, then it isn't stupid. My lab partner and I joke that he wasn't talking about the contraption, but the intellect of my lab partner. It took me like three months, but I automated a data pipeline to extract data, clean it up, and spit it out in an Excel or PDF format to one of our clients. I walked over to shoot the shit with a lady who handles my client and gives me tasks and she told me we made 40k off them every month for that automated job. Fuck. I need to go start my own business. When Carl Friedrich Gauss, the famous German mathematician and physicist, was in elementary school around 1784, his class was assigned the busy work task of adding all the numbers from 1 to 100, 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on. This usually kept the class quiet for half an hour or so. Seven-year-old Carl was sitting quietly with his correct answer, 550, while the rest of the class was just starting. So the surprise teacher asked him how he came up with a solution. He replied that he added 1 and 100 and got 101. Then he added 2 and 99 and got 101. 3 plus 98 equals 101 and so on. He realized there was a pattern of 50 pairs of numbers with each pair adding up to 101 and 50 times 101 equals 50 50. One of my favorite examples is Andy Kim and I'd like to preface this by saying I don't think Kim is lazy so much as a genius. Andrew Yo Kim was a singer slash songwriter who became famous under the stage name Andy Kim. He achieved success writing songs for bands like Archie's possibly most notably Sugar Sugar. After his success, he coasted for a while until his record label dropped him for lack of output. At that point, he created his own label and cranked out hits like Rock Me Gently. When they saw this, the big record labels then bought his label under the assumption that they would profit off of the songs he wrote and performed. He then very shortly stopped writing songs and largely lived off the sale of his label. Work smarter, not harder. When I was in college, I had a job at an Italian fast food place with a reputation for its breadsticks. They came in frozen and we needed a bit to thaw. So we'd take a giant three x four aluminum baking sheet, spread them out in a single layer with no space and cover it with a plastic bag. Then leave it, sit in the walk-in overnight. The next day, you'd have to get a pair of tongs and move each stick to a new tray, turning them over then cover the new tray with a bag, then let them sit on the racks for a couple of hours before brushing the garlic butter sauce. This was tedious enough that you'd usually be ready to brush the butter on the first tray as soon as you turned the last tray. I was given this task for the first time one morning and just did not want to deal with it. I realized if I put the second tray upside down on top of the first one, then turned it over and took the first tray out, I got exactly the same results blew my boss's mind when I did the three hour job in about 15 minutes. I was given a five cent hour raise. An older company had a person dedicated to data entry, which boiled down to copying and pasting portions of data from text files into spreadsheets and formatting into a report. The person originally doing this job spent a full 40 plus hour a week doing it, but was not very computer literate. When they retired, the company hired someone with actual skills. The new hire convinced management to let her work remotely after getting up to speed on the job. The first week at home was spent automating the entire job. The remainder of their multi-year tenure with the company was spent doing whatever they wanted, saved the 10 to 15 minutes weekly to run their program and to answer the odd email here and there, all while getting paid a full salary and benefits. They actually had to add a few errors now and then to make it seem realistic. I've worked in a few places that have people doing this. Usually, when they retire, the job is given to some younger person that figures out how to do it in 10 minutes, on top of the rest of their normal job. Currently, the year is 2020. I'm confident that any task being done anywhere in the world on any computer that is repetitive and time consuming could pretty easily be automated. People will always try to make their job easier, but any competent manager should be able to weed this out. I worked goods in for an aircraft manufacturer as a summer job at university. Parts would arrive and we'd open them and key in all the details into a terminal. That bit was long-winded. I discovered the terminal keyboard has assignable shortcuts and set up a bunch of them for all the boilerplate such that keying in an item was about six keystrokes. 
save myself and my workmates hours every day, which we would spend pranking each other, other warehouse staff, and staff at other sites. Back in high school, a lot of kids used to walk through this park to get home slash to school. A portion of the path went into the woods because it was just quicker than walking the actual trail. At one point in the walk through the woods, you had to go up this small but tedious hill. Nothing major, but it took like 10 seconds of hard work to go up it. You couldn't go around because the other side was a small cliff to the creek below, and the other side had dense trees. One summer, a bunch of us got together and decided to just dig through the hole to make it flat. It took like 14 of us three good days to get through it. It was a hard three days, but it was definitely worth it. Save 10 seconds of hill climbing every morning and afternoon, 150 plus days of the year. And it wasn't just us, but hundreds of other kids who took the same path every day. Sometimes you need to put in a lot of work so your future selves can enjoy the easy way out. I was invited to my friend's yearly apple picking. It was a full day of apples and kids and filling a truck for cider. I'm lazy and suggested we make the process more efficient with tarps on the ground. We managed in two hours what historically took all day. We didn't even get to the picnic lunch. I essentially ruined apple picking. I was delivering a pop-up bar to a fancy hotel, and they had a bunch of Japanese delegates staying for the event. One of the guys went up to his room about 2 a.m. and ran himself a bath. He fell asleep. When we came to pick up the bars, the roof over the reception was leaking, and the receptionist explained the story. They put out a bucket and cones every time we took stuff out to our van, and it got worse and worse. Lath and plaster ceiling. I suggested they get a tarp under that thing to save time cleaning up when it all falls in. We even got to see the walk of shame when their bus arrived. I have a massive exercise to do at our year end, accountancy. My work previously got checked by another manager who spent over three weeks going over the data. Eventually, she got shifted to another department and that workload fell on me. Basically, self-audit and then present the data to the actual auditors. My previous manager was absurdly shit at Excel. I didn't let on, but I did all the audit on a separate file using simple but out of the way formulas. Not only did I reduce the task from three weeks to basically real time checks, no time, but when I was told that I had to perform that exercise every month, my job became a dawdle. I didn't let on that everything was automated by some ifs, indexing, max values, and range checks. Living the dream. Sorry if I rambled on. In Australia, explorers discovered a mountain that was taller than Mount Kosciuszko, which was thought to be the tallest mountain in Australia. Rather than cause confusion by telling everyone a new tallest mountain had been found, they simply named the new mountain Mount Kosciuszko and renamed the original to something else. I knew a guy who had a low level data slash reporting job. He had several daily slash weekly work responsibilities, including a bunch of reports that needed quite a bit of tweaking from raw data to finished product. But like I said, low level. We didn't find out until way later, but he had set up macros for each of his major responsibilities where he could. Once set up, he just run the macros to do his work, but then he'd smartly hold off on delivering the reports until just a little bit before the deadlines. He'd hit every assignment and was seen as reliable. He would also complain about the workload so people would leave him with that work. I doubt he did a full hour of work a day after he set up what he did. Eventually, he left the job for one with better pay, but damn did he work lazy. Also, he was smart not to reveal until the end, because had he told them about it, he would have gotten a pat on the back and would have been given a whole other workload on top of maintaining those macros, etc. Dude milked the job not the other way around. Years ago, as a student, I got a job stocking shelves. Guys were carrying the heavy boxes, putting them on the floor, and then bending each time to pick up the items to put on the shelves. I was maybe a light 100 pounds, female, and carrying the boxes was just killing me physically. So one day, I had an idea. I put the box on an old desk chair and rolled it around. No more carrying and no more bending. Funny thing is, that instead of doing the same thing, most of the guys called me lazy and kept carrying the heavy boxes, just to prove how strong they are. 
Now, they have special rolling carts to do the job. My brother gave my oldest nephew $10 a week if he did all the chores without needing to be told or complaining. One day, he gets home early from work and sees the neighbor kid tossing a bag in the trash. He asks him what he is doing and the kid says he gets 5 bucks a week to take care of a few chores. My nephew outsourced his chores. I'm doing it right now. Automated data cleaning in Python. My coworkers don't know about it. At most, it takes them 2 hours. My coding mentor got hired in a US government position and he mentioned being able to automate a lot of tasks in his interview. After the interview was over, he was contacted by one of the other people that were in on the interview and said basically, look, we get paid such and such a year and only work such and such hours. Do the automation, but don't say you are doing the automation. Edit clarity. An engineer spent hours developing a program so they could start the coffee pot from their desk and not have to wait for coffee when arriving in the break room. That's pretty much how the first webcam was created too. Lazy computer engineers wanted to see if there was coffee in the pot. A few years back, my sister was doing some hardware testing and validation. She was working with a bunch of Excel tables. When she found out I was doing some automatic XLS, creating slash editing for my job, she had me create a script for her job. Two through three days of eye-killing boring work done in 20 seconds. She kept it a secret for a while. The worst task became the best task. She eventually shared it with the company as there were many others that did a similar job. And then she got promoted. In conclusion, her laziness helped her with her promotion. My greenhouse watering system. I would spend an hour per day watering the garden, 30 hours per month. So for $50, I set up a PVC watering system in a few hours. Now I just turn on the spigot and watch while I smoke a joint. Every year in the Canadian winter, power lines would fail due to the weight of the snow. It took many days to build up enough to break a line, so they would employ a team to walk the roots and shake the poles to loosen the snow. One day, they saw a bear shaking the poles and realized if they could get the bear to do it, they wouldn't need to walk the root. So they gave one guy a bucket of honey and we walk the root painting the sides of the poles with honey to attract the bears. It worked for a few more years, but this still takes a lot of time to do. So then they had the idea of flying a helicopter along the route with a trained sniper with honey paintballs that he'd shoot the poles with. On its maiden flight, the helicopter passed the lines and the downdraft blew away all of the snow. The flights continue to this day, but without the sniper. I worked with a guy, Ethan, who unfortunately was kind of scapegoated for the failure of a project, so was let go but he was definitely capable. A year later, the company I worked for was sold off and eventually shuttered. While looking for new work, I spoke with a recruiter who had also worked with the Ethan, and he mentioned how he was trying to find him a new position too, as he had a contract job to digitize and update old mechanical drawings to the company's new software. Apparently, he wrote a bunch of macros and set up a workflow and was able to complete the work within a month even though the contract was for six months. The company let him go since the work was done and had no intentions of keeping him on. In construction environments, it's quite common to have a soft foreman slash men underneath the actual person in charge. You basically find the individuals you know want to work their way up and give them components of the work and however many people they need. They'll do it because oftentimes it means less physical work for them you're still ultimately signing off their work or settling debates, etc., which makes you the ultimate foreman or supervisor. But you know that you can assign the task and they'll let you know when it's done and everyone is keeping the schedule in mind. I remember reading about a Texas airport that had a high rate of comp from people who had to wait a long time for their luggage at baggage claim. The solution? Assign a further away baggage claim for the same flights. People walked longer but complaints went way down since they didn't have to wait as long. I am presently printing and wiring a safety switch that will disable my lath when the chuck key is removed. It is a rule that the chuck key will never be in the chuck whilst any other activity is occurring, other than tightening the chuck. Whilst I have never yet forgotten to remove the key, I decided that to ensure it is never left in the chuck, 
the machine will never start with the key removed from the switch. I worked in a library, scanning incoming books into the system. This required a lot of transferring of piles of books from one station to another. My workmate constantly called me lazy because I would not get out of my chair while doing this job. I don't know how many times I had to explain that A, that's what wheelie chairs are for, and B, I was at least three times as fast as her at the same job, and this was in part because of the efficiency of not getting up out of my chair every two minutes. When Peter the Great was building St. Petersburg, there was a huge boulder needing removing as it was in the way of a road. Lots of contractors tendered for the job that would use explosives to start, smash into smaller pieces using sledgehammer, and then cart them away. A local peasant also put in an offer for half the price. They gave him the job. He and a few friends dug up a large hole next to it, took away the excess earth, tipped the boulder in, and covered it with the remaining earth. Basically, every invention in the last 100 years is an example of how to accomplish a task with much less effort, the automobile being the first one that comes to mind. Before it was shut down entirely, I was able to privately tour the coal power plant in southeastern Virginia. At one point in the tour, the guide told me to watch out for a cord on the floor. The cord ran into a small window air conditioning unit that was duct taped to a vent. Supposedly, one day the plant began to overheat and the plant would have to be shut down in order to repair the malfunction. There are emergency reserves for situations like this, but the plant was overheating faster than they could switch it over. Someone at the plant had to just purchase an AC unit and had it in the back of their vehicle. They ran and grabbed it, plugged it in, and pointed it into one of the vents. The amount of cool air it produced was enough to not only offset the overheating, but to also re-regulate the system, so instead of repairing the issue, they just fixed the AC in place and let it run continuously until the day the plant shut down. I work at a company which despite having 100 plus employees, doesn't seem to have one that knows more than basics when it comes to computers. Due to the pandemic, we've all had to take up some chores to clock some hours. They've got me retyping PDF read-only files to a new Word file. Thus far, they haven't figured out that you can just export a PDF file to a .doc in Acrobat but my schedule is now 1-3 cleared to do typing work. The way Linux went about protecting accounts from brute force guessing passwords, since those attacks rely on trying a gazillion passwords, they just added a delay between each try, effectively limiting the number of different passwords you can try in a reasonable time frame. Since then, it's the de facto way of going about it. Years ago, while working at my uncle's warehouse, there was a monthly shipment of double doors with the frame built in. These doors were so heavy that it was a five to six man job to get them off the truck and walk them through a narrow enough hallway. This process could kill two hours of sales because the place had a crew of 10 men with six being needed. It was known to avoid shopping there on those days. Have no idea how long they did this, but on the second shipment when I started, I got one of those rolling boards that mechanics use to go under cars and told the guys to place it on top. I turned a six man job with two hours to a two man job that took 30 minutes. So a company I worked for some years ago launched a new product. There was a very significant prize to the sales team that sold the most of this product. It cost approximately $100 at the time. I simply bumped the price of every product we had by 100 and gave the new product to every customer as a thank you. No one was the wiser and smashed the competition by a massive margin.